Okay, so this is where we left off, right? We depreciated the first month for the first coffee brewer, right? We used straight line. So we determined that one month for depreciating this is going to cost me $52.78, okay? And when I depreciated my asset, right, it's going to leave me with a book value of $1747.22, all right? So that was the very first one. So let's go ahead and compute the second one. All right. So here, what is going to be my depreciation basis? 2605.29. 2605.29 minus salvage value, which should leave you 2605.29. All right. What's going to be my depreciation rate this time? Good, right? One divided by the estimated useful life to give you 20%. So in this case, what's going to be my depreciation for the month instead of the year? 521.06. Yeah, remember, that's going to be for the whole year. All right, let's see, equal round. Okay, something's wrong with my formula. Equal round. For $43.42, okay, for the month of June, right? We're going to take the whole amount, divide it by, so we're going to take the, the our depreciation basis, times it by 20% to get us for the total amount for the whole year. We also have to divide by 12 because we're not looking at the whole year, we're looking at just the month, okay? So again, depreciate accumulated depreciation should... Be the same for the first month so therefore what should be my total book value 256187 all right So in this case, as a grand total, if I wanted to calculate for the, my total accumulated depreciation for my account, for my total coffee brewers, what is going to be my total depreciation expense? Forty-four. Okay, forty-four plus. Wait, hold on. Where do you get forty-four? Added the two. Okay, so 40, 43 plus fifty-two should not give you forty-four. Oh, I was adding the book values. Oh, okay, okay. We're looking at depreciation expense because. We're going to calculate as coffee brewers as one whole unit. $96.20? And twenty cents as your total depreciation expense for both coffee brewers for the month of June. Okay. All right. So then what happened here? That. Okay. How many years life does it have? Cinco. For straight line, and how much is the salvage value?
No salvage value. No salvage value. So let's go find our coffee grinders. Here we are. All right. We know that it has five years life. No salvage value. And what depreciation method are we using? We're also going to be using straight line. Okay. So let's go ahead and find out how much my total asset cost was for the coffee grinder. How much is my coffee grinder? 41.45.57. So 4.145.57. That's after you deducted the 1%. Correct, correct, correct. Because that's how much it cost me right now, right? Because I took the discount, that's how much I paid Haley for. I didn't pay them for the full amount. I paid them at the discounted amount. So 41.45.57. And of course, when did I actually place it into service? Um, the same month we started our coffee, so June. Oh. <clears throat> but towards the end, so I think it's going to... I don't know how that works. Okay. Was it after the 15th? When was the last day the electrical stuff was actually placed into? When did we actually recognize the full cost of the coffee grinder? on the 15th and obviously like I've mentioned before right if we did electrical work on it we completed the foundation you're going to test out the product because for all we know is what if the electrical wire didn't work so we spent all that money to get electrical unit and it doesn't work same thing with here right when we purchased the coffee grinder on the day that we bought it you should always test to see if it works. You don't want to wait till after you did all the electrical work, you built the foundation just to test the machine and it doesn't work. So at the end of the day, um, the idea here is when did we place into service? In this case, we transferred it in on the 15th. So therefore, we should have tested and uh, attempted to create our recipes here to make sure that the machine works. So in this case, we placed into service as of the 15th. So what does that mean? If we place into service as of the 15th. Start with uh, that month. Yes. Just, one to the 15th, uh, you start with that month. Uh, 16th later, you go to the next month. Correct. So in this case, we just fell right on the cutoff point to depreciate it. So we are depreciating for the month of June. All right. So how do we solve for our depreciation basis? 41.45 and 57 cents. Mm-hmm. Because there's no salvage value. Good. So our depreciation rates will be zero or 20% because it's uh, uh, one divided by five or one divided by 60. It's uh, 0.2. Good. Our uh, depreciation rate is going to be 69.09. It's going to be, uh, I use the equal round, uh, a depreciation rate times, I mean, our depreciation base times our base divided by 12 equal round 2. 
this one on there. Perfect. Which, of course, is the first month. So therefore, what should be my book value as of the first month? So we're going to take our depreciation asset minus the depreciation. And so with 40, 75, and 67 cents. Oh, what did I miss? 40. Oh, I got to put in 90. Oh, thank you for calling my mistake. Okay. I was like, where? Okay, where does the 90 come from? Yes, uh, 40, 69, and 48 cents. Perfect. Okay, so the depreciation for the coffee grinder is going to be for sixty nine oh nine. Okay, so then sorry, my mouse is locked. All right, there you go. So then, what happened next? What's the next asset that we are going to be depreciating? It's not one. We're going to be doing it for three. The computer, the printer, the cash register. Okay. All right. Awesome. So what's their lifespan? So they each have five years. Do they have a salvage value or residual value? None. None. And how are we going to calculate the depreciation? How much are what are what method are we using to calculate the depreciation? Oh, the double down one. Mm -hmm. So double declining. All right. All right, DD for short. All right. So let's go ahead and do one at a time. So we're focusing on the computer, right? So let's take a look at how much the computer cost me. All right, here we are. Computer. How much did the computer cost me? Eighteen thirty-four eighty-four. All right. And what day do we actually place into service? June 5th. June 5th, 183484. 183484, right? Our assumption is when we got our computer, you plugged it into the outlet and you set up the operating system. So obviously, the day that we got it is the day that we are going to set it up and have it ready for service. Set up my printer, make sure that they're connected to the Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So in that case, if I started on, if I placed this into service as of June 5th, we are depreciating it for the month of June. So in this case, right, this is double declining. What's the depreciation basis for double declining? So it's going to be uh, 1 divided by 5 times 2, which gives us 40% or 0 0.4. Okay, so the depreciation rate, good. So 1 divided by 5 times 2, 40%. All right, let's go back to the depreciation basis. 
what is my basis going to be? All right, why did you choose this number? Uh, it says no residual value. Okay, so your so what's the formula for to figuring out what the depreciation basis is? Oh, uh, asset cost uh, times uh, salvage. No. No. Oh. For... Minus salvage value. No. All right. In this case, Felipe got the correct answer for the very first month, right? Because in this case, yes, the very the depreciation basis for the very 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 first month is in fact 1834.84. However, when we solve for July, it is definitely not going to need to be 1834.84. Okay, not the book, not minus the book value, but it is book value. It is book value. It's the beginning of the year's book value, which in this case, we just started our asset on the very first month. So therefore, it's going to be for 1834.84. However, when we do go on, when we look into the next months of depreciation, we're going to find out that you can't not, it's going to be a significantly less. All right. So let's go ahead and just solve. Let's go ahead and solve first. So the first one is that because we're starting the, there we're starting the depreciation from the very beginning. So our book value right now is 1834.84. So now let's solve for how much a pre depreciation expense we're going to incur. Could you show the formula for the rate? Right. So we're taking one divided by the estimated useful life times two because we're going to depreciate it twice as much. Okay, so hence the word double declining. I'm good. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for just the month of June's depreciation expense. So how much depreciation expense are we going to collect? 61.16. Okay. All right. So of course, for the very, very first entry here, we know it's going to be 61.16. So therefore, what's going to be my book value at the end of June? Seventeen seventy-three and eighty and sixty-eight cents. Good. Seventeen seventy-three sixty-eight. And guess where that number's gonna go? The number of depreciation basis. Exactly, because um, the end of June, right, is going to be the beginning of July. So in this case. My, be, my depreciation basis for July is going to be, the, it's going to start off with the 1773.68. Okay. So remember, depreciation, right, double declining. 
the depreciation basis is the beginning of the year's book value. Okay, everything else is the same, right? You take the depreciation basis times the rate to get your depreciation expense, but that's for the year. We're looking at the month, so you just divide it by 12. Okay, so good, that's the first one. So then we're going to move on to our printer, okay? So our printer, let's go ahead and take a look at how much the printer cost me. Right? How much did the printer cost me? 37887. 37887. Okay. So asset cost, right? We know that it's going to be double declining because we're going to treat all three electronics, right, as double declining. Asset cost is 37887, okay? We know that it has a useful life of five years with a salvage value of zero. And plus, once again, we also purchased it on the very same day. Right, we bought the computer system together. All right, and our assumption is when we set up our operating system, we also set up the printer as well. We did a test print to make sure the jets are working, making sure that the ink is okay, test printing our invoices. All right, okay, so there we go. All right. So therefore, because we placed it into service as of June 5th, we're going to depreciate for the month of June. So in this case, what is my depreciation basis for my printer? What was that? No worries. Right. What's my formula going to be, or what's my depreciation rate? Right. We're going to do 1 divided by 5. Oops. 1 divided by 5 times 2 gives you 0.4. So what is my depreciation base uh, expense for the month of June? Six three was correct. Six 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 two nine. You said. Yeah, and then round it to sixty three. Good, excellent. All right. And of course, right, first month of depreciation is going to be your first, uh, the same as your accumulated. So, what is going to be your book value at the end of the first month? Now we got to do the last one, which is our cash register, right? We know the depreciation base, the depreciation method we're going to be using is double declining. So let's solve for the very, very, very first one is what was my total asset cost for my cash register? 649.49. Good. And when did we place into service? June 6th. 
June 6th, right? Right, when you purchase a cash register, first thing you got to do is you got to plug it in, put the receipts in there, and test print the receipts to make sure that the machine is working. And, of course, there's not much for setup, right? Okay, so here we are. So, total cost is 64949. Once again, five years for useful life, zero with zero salvage value. And we placed it into service as of June 6th. So therefore, we do need to depreciate for the month of June. So what's my depreciation basis? Good. What is going to be my depreciation rate? Point forty. What is going to be my depreciation expense for the month of June? Twenty one sixty five. Twenty one sixty five. Which then is the first month of accumulated depreciation. So therefore, what is my book value at the end of the first month? Which is 627.84. 2784. All right, good job. All right. Any questions so far? Yes, how are we going to generalize all this? It's easy. We just take all the numbers. <laughs> uh, from the depreciation from each one we have? Mm hmm. Okay, so it's pretty it's straightforward. You're gonna you're gonna laugh at how ex how easy this is. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Ooh, what is next? Go. What do I need to depreciate next? The furniture. All of the furniture. So that means all my furniture is going to be my tables, my counter, my desk set, and my display shelves. Now, what does it say that they all are and... What method am I going to be to, to calculate depreciation for each one? All right, so what, what, what do they all have? Okay, so what okay, so first let's start off what what method am I using to calculate? Straight line. Straight line, good. They have how many useful life? They have a total of seven years, right? Each furniture is seven years, right? And they don't have any salvage value. So in this case, let's go ahead and depreciate every single 
furniture item here. So let's start with the first one, which is our tables. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and look up how much my tables cost me right now. Okay. So here we are. How much did my bistro tables and chairs cost me? Six six oh five oh eight. What was my depreciation method again? Straight line. Straight line. Okay. What was my assets useful life? It was seven uh, years. Seven years. No salvage value. And when did we place my tables into service? Uh, as soon as we got them. Yes, since we got it, because in this case, tables and chairs does not it does not take that much to set up, right? You just you just place them there, and they're ready to go. So in this case, they were already ready in service the minute they that you received them. So June eighth, okay. June eighth. So therefore, we will be depreciating for the month of June, right? So, what is going to be my depreciation basis? Uh, so, there's no uh, salvage value, so 66.05.08. Okay. What? Um, our rate is uh, 0 0.142857123. Okay, good. I mean, four, three. Good. So what will my depreciation expense be for the month of June? Uh, equal round uh, base times rate divided by 12. It's rounded to two. I get 7863. Right, which becomes the first month's accumulated depreciation. So what is going to be my book value at the end of June? After we subtract uh, 785 and 63 cents from 66.05.08, uh, 75.26.45. Seven, what? No, six. Six five three six. Four. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we're subtracting, not adding. Okay. Okay. Uh, it went backwards. Okay. Okay. Right. Everyone got the same answers. Okay, so now that's that one. Let's move on to the counters. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how much the counters cost me. Okay, how much did the counters cost me? Eleven ninety three twenty two. And when did I place this into service as well? June seventh. So same thing here, right? We received the counter on June seventh. Not much need to set up to get it ready for service, right? You just place it where you need to place it. Okay. So June seventh. So eleven ninety three twenty two. Right, zero salvage value, useful life of seven years, and we placed it into service as of June 7th, 
and our depreciation method is straight line. Okay, so we're going to be depreciating for the month of June. So what's my depreciation basis going to be? Eleven ninety three twenty two. All right. What's my depreciation rate going to be? Zero point one four two eight five seven one four three. Good. So then what's going to be my depreciation expense for the month of June? Equal round base times rate divided by 12, uh, round it to the second hundreds, uh, $14.21. $14.21, which then becomes my first month of accumulated depreciation. So then what is going to be my book value? at the end of my first month. 11.79 and one cents. Good. Okay. Now our desktop. Okay, desktop. How much was our desk set? Fifty-eight forty-seven. Right. Of course. What day did we place into service? June 7th, pretty straightforward, right? A desktop or a desk set, pretty straightforward, right? It's already, it's already ready for service by just placing into the office. So in this case, 65857. 65837. Yes. Zero salvage value, seven years of life. We placed it into service as of June 7th. And once again, we're going to be using straight line to calculate our depreciation okay, for the month of June. So once again, what's my depreciation basis? We got no salvage, so it's minus the salvage, so it's going to be uh, six fifty-eight and thirty-seven cents. Good. Our rate still going to be equals one divided by seven equals zero point one four two eight five seven one four three. Um, our expense is going to be uh, I'm off by here somewhere. Um, Equal round the base times the rate divided by 12, and I got 784. That's right. Uh, our depreciation is going to be 784. Our book value is going to be the cost with the X, like the way you spelled it, uh, minus the 784 equals 650 and 53 cents. Good. Six fifty fifty three. Last but not least, 
our display shelves. All right. So here, what was my total cost for my display shelves? Five seventy-seven oh eight. Good. And when did we place into service? June seventh. June seventh. So in this case, we probably set up the whole the shelves the day that we got it. So five seventy-seven oh eight. Okay. Zero salvage value. Seven years of life. Placed it into service as of June 7th. And we are doing straight line. All right. And we are definitely going to depreciate it for the month of June. So what's my depreciation basis? Rate. Okay. The expense for the month of June. Come on, Melinda, you got this. <laughs> Six eighty seven. Good. All right. Which we know to be our first month's accumulated depreciation. So therefore, what should be my book value at the end of June? Five seventy twenty one. And there we have it. We completed our depreciation tables. And we have everything that we need to include in our depreciation. All right. Now, before we actually journalize it, I also threw in Goodwill here because we're going to also amortize our Goodwill. Mine as well. Depreciation, amortization, they're the same thing. Just one is for tangible assets and the other for intangible assets. So... As I've looked here, right, what is going to be um, the amount that I need to amortize? So in this case, I need to calculate one month of amortization for Goodwill. So the idea here is Goodwill is subject to have an estimated useful life, or in this case, it's good for 15 years. Okay. So... As we remember, right, how do we treat amortization? How do we treat amortization? It's not going to be straight line. You, yes, it is exactly like straight line. It's exactly like straight line, so good. All right, so remember, you need to remember as not straight line as is straight line, okay? <laughs> so amortization is exactly like straight line. So here, how much is my goodwill? 2100 and in this case, it's an intangible asset, right? So the day that you buy it is the day that it starts to lose its value because in a sense in this way, right? When we buy a license, right? It's the same concept idea here is that when you buy a license, it's going to be the day that you purchase it. So in this case, Goodwill, same thing, the day that we purchased it, which is June 4th, okay? So...
All right. We know it to be 2100, and we also know it to be similar to straight line. Obviously, the method that we're going to be using is amortization. Okay. So, if we know it to have a useful life of 15 years, and we know that we place it into service, right, the day that we bought it, is the day that it starts the pre it starts amortizing, right? The only difference between this and the straight line is what? What do you not see on here? A depreciation. No salvage value. No salvage value because if you think about it, goodwill. Can goodwill cease to hold value at the end of its life? You have to renew it, exactly. So in this case, just like a license, right? At the end of its life, it's zero. It's zero. There is no salvage value because you have to renew it. Excellent. So in this case, right, what is going, since I placed it into service on June 4th, right, what is going to be my depreciation basis? It's just your asset cost. So in this case, it's just 2100 Good. What is my estimated use? I'm sorry. What is going to be my depreciation rate? Like 0.66666? Yes. So it's going to be 1 over the estimated useful life of 15 to give you a total of 0 0.06. Okay. Good. So same idea here. I only want to calculate for one month's worth of amortization. So what is going to be the amount here? 1167. Oh, ooh. I forgot to divide by 12. So good, 1167, which we know to be our accumulated amortization. So in this case, what is going to be my book value at the end of June? Two thousand eighty-eight and thirty-three cents. So now we are officially completely done with our table. So how I want you to journalize it is we're going to be moving back and forth from our table to our journal. Okay. How you want to do it, if you want to go from each item here on the list, you could do that too. Okay. I think I'm going to do that just because so then we can keep track of everything that we're doing instead of moving back and forth from one area to another. Okay, so let's go ahead and journalize it. So in this case, right, how do we journalize for depreciation? Uh, so we're gonna go, if we're going to go each one, we're going to go like computer and then the PR for computer. Okay, now... Or are we going to the sub one that's that uh, accumulated depression computer? Okay, so in this case, right, the historical cost rule says, can we devalue our assets? Yes. No. no. Because of historical cost, right? If I purchase my asset... For, for this example, right? If I purchase my uh, computer for, for $1,834.84, can I say next year that it's worth 16 something? No, of course not. Uh, no, no, no. Not until, not until, and not unless you decide to short sell it and get rid of it, then yes, you can 
you know, assume that you take a loss because you used it. But in this case, if I'm going to continue to keep having it in my books, can I record it at 16? I have a question for you too, if this is something that you have to think about as well. Can you actually, can you actually physically touch your, touch the asset and say, I used it? Can you put a price point on that? You mean for use or just in general? I mean, uh, however you interpret what I just asked you. So if I if I use my if I use my computer, can I put a price can I put a price point on it? In this case, that's what we're doing. We're calculating how much it costs me to use my asset, right? But that's because it, by accounting, they tell you to do that. But am I really spending money to? use my asset am i actually spending 61 dollars and 16 cents to use my computer oh no no this is going to be called a non-cash transaction because in this case right i calculated and what i'm doing is i'm transferring my cost as a way to represent that i am using my item but in this case is it really costing me 61 dollars and 16 cents to use my item? No. So in this case, you cannot write it against, you cannot take this away from the actual asset. You do need to record it using the contra account accumulated depreciation. All right? Now, because it's a contra account, what side should it reflect on? Debit or credit? If an asset is a is is considered a debit balance, what does my contra account do? Credit. Credit. It's going to be in the opposite, correct? So in this case, accumulated depreciation is going to go against your actual asset itself, right? And that's what book value is because when you do end up selling that item back out to the market, even though you used it your price point because the assumption is you used it is that you're you can't sell it back out for the, the original price that you purchased it for you can you're going to use the book value to kind of measure on what the appropriate selling uh, uh price value that the machine or whatever asset holds right that's what book value is for okay it's just so then when you do actually sell it in, re in reality, this is what it's worth now after you've used it, okay? So in this case, if it's a credit, then what's going to be my debit? What did I calculate here? What? The computer. Oh, no. The accumulated depression on it. Okay, so that's your credit. What's my debit going to be? What did I calculate the entire time I did my depreciation? What am I calculating? Depreciation expense. You're exactly. You're calculating depreciation expense. So in this case, like I've mentioned before, what I'm going to have you guys do is, since it's all going to go into the same exact account, I only want you to write in depreciation expense once. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single asset and we're going to journalize every single one um, accordingly. So let's go ahead and type in depreciation expense. Okay, depreciation expense. All right. What account number is that?
So we said for me find depreciation table. Where can you find all of the list? Good. In your chart of accounts. So chart of accounts under expenses should be the very last three things. So what was it again, Alan? No, Six. Sixty-six. Yes, yeah, 660000 Oh, okay. I heard 62 and I was like, yeah, oh, that's I did too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So there you go. Depreciation expense is going to be for the 66000 All right. Now, once again, I don't know what my value of my depreciation expense is going to be. That's going to be the grand total of all of your accumulated depreciation. So, like I've mentioned before, our very first one that we calculated here was for the computer. I'm gonna do it in this exact order so we don't lose track. So if my contra account's going to be my accumulated depreciation, what am I gonna use for the computer? What account do I have that represents the depreciation for my computer? Accumulated depreciation computer. Exactly. So each one is going to be for whatever asset item it is, right? So in this case, it's going to be accumulated depreciation dash whatever that item is. So in this case, computer is going to be my first one, which is going to be account number 114. Uh, for the computer, it's going to be 14011. Okay, right? The computer is 14010. The accumulated depreciation is 14011. Good. And for what amount did I calculate for my depreciation expense for the month of June? 6116. $61.16. All right. So that was the first one. So let's see what the second one is going to be. So I need to figure out what my accumulated depreciation for my printer is going to be. All right. So I'm going to shrink this up so that I don't have to use so much space here. Okay. So here, right, my, my account's going to be the accumulated depreciation what? Yes, depreciation dash printer. All right, fourteen zero twenty one. Fourteen zero twenty one. And for what amount did we calculate for the printer? Twelve sixty three. Twelve dollars and sixty three cents. Good. All right. Let's move down the line here. What's the next one I have? Cash register. Yeah, so in this case, ACUM depreciation for the register. What account number is that? 1451. 1451. And for what amount did I calculate for the depreciation expense for my register? Twenty-one dollars and sixty-five cents. Okay, so two one six five. Okay. All right, moving down along the list. All right, let's see what's next. So my coffee brewers, right? 
So my account, hold on, let me accum. For the brewer. Are we gonna do them separate or add them together? We're gonna add them together. We already added them together. Oh, um, brewer uh, 15, oh, 11. Okay. What was the um, uh, the total amount of depreciation expense for both the coffee brewers? Right. Good. Ninety six twenty. Okay. All right. Next we have is the coffee grinder. So here we go. Accumulated depreciation for the grinder. Okay, account number? Uh, 15021. All right, and for what amount did I calculate? 6909. 6909. Okay. Good. Let's see what's next. I have depreciation for my tables. Okay, so. Thirteen oh eleven. Thirteen oh eleven, and how much did I calculate? Seventy eight sixty three. Seventy eight dollars and sixty three cents. All right. What about my counter? Oh no, my Excel's not picking it up. All right, counter. What account number is this? Account number for a counter is going to be 13021. All right, good. And for what amount did I calculate this one for? Fourteen twenty three. Fourteen twenty three. Twenty one. Mm -hmm. Thirteen twenty one. Yes, I. That's what I thought so too. I meant fourteen twenty. I would throw you guys off by two cents again. <laughs> yes, fourteen twenty one. Good. What about my desk? Let me see if I can just copy and paste these. I don't think it's, is it gonna work? Okay, yes, it worked. Okay, so I have it for my desk. If my background's too noisy, just let me know. No worries, no, you're fine. Okay, so for my desk. Uh, 1331. All right, at for what amount? $7.84. $7.84. Okay. Next one I have is going to be my shelves. Okay, shelves. All right, what account number is that? Uh, shelves, uh, 1341. Okay. For what amount? Six dollars. $6, oops, six, six dollars, not seven. Six dollars and 87 cents. Okay. Let's see. Last but not least, we have our truck. 
How much was the depreciate? Or actually, let's start off with the account number. What is my account for my depreciation? Seventeen oh eleven. Seventeen eleven. Oops. Seventeen eleven. And what for what a total amount? Two fifty seven sixty seven. Two five seven six seven. Okay. So two five seven six seven. All right, two five seven six seven. All right. So then, of course, what I want you to do is I want you to equal sum this total amount to get your total amount of depreciation expense. So in this case, what is my grand total depreciation expense? Six twenty five ninety five. Six twenty five ninety five. And there we have it. And I didn't fat figure a number. I'm happy. Okay, good job. All right. Okay, what do you want to make a note here? End of the month depreciation. Good. End of the month depreciation. Okay. All right. And, you know, might as well we're already here. Go ahead and finish up the last one, which is the amortization. So same idea here, except we don't use the word depreciation. What word do we use? Expense. Amortization expense. Amortization expense. All right. And our account for this one is going to be the accumulated amortization goodwill. All right. Perfect. We reached pretty much a good chunk of the journal. So in this case, right, what is my account for amortization expense? Six, six, five hundred. Six, six, five hundred, okay. And what is my accumulated amortization expense? I misspelled amortization. Okay. Okay. And lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at my my amortization over here. How much did I calculate this to be? Eleven dollars and sixty-seven cents. There we have it. So now your depreciation table is done for. You don't need it anymore, especially when we look when we come back with this and finish up the, our adjustments next week. All right. So you're done with that. Okay. Note here. All right. We could say the same thing for. Um, above, all right, we could say end of the month amortization okay. okay now all we have left to do is go down the line one at a time in our general ledger. Starting with the first one, what's my very first account here? Depreciation. 
depreciation expense, which is going to be in expense operating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Six thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're not closing books, so we'll just put in a month. Whatever you want to do. Yes, that's perfectly fine. If you want to be specific, you could put fixed assets. You want to be more specific, you could say furniture, equipment, uh, equipment, office equipment, vehicles, whatever you'd like, okay? Uh, General Journal 23 for $625.95. And our rolling balance is equal to the $625.95. Okay. Since we're already here, go ahead and do the amortization expense as well. Uh, six, uh, end of the month again. Uh, general Journal 23, and that's going to be for 11 And again, for equals, going to be 11 Good. Excellent. Now we go to our assets. Okay. What's the first assets that we have here? Uh, computadora. Computer. Uh, do I put in a month or first month's use? It doesn't matter because we're, I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to put first month. Here we are, computer, accumulated appreciation here. First month. Journal, journal 23. And it's going to be a credit for... Sixty-one, sixteen. Okay. Credit again. It's going to equal to sixty-one, sixteen. Uh, next is going to be our printer. And uh, first month. Can you give me just a second to get caught up? Mm-hmm. Depression for the printer. First month again, uh, General Journal 23. And we're going to credit this account for $12.63, which brings our running balance to $12.63. to our register. So, first month again, General Journal, 23. 
or 2160, I mean 2165. Uh, it brings our credit, our credit running balance to 2165. Next uh, is going to be our brewer. A brewer, I uh, appreciate the uh, depreciation of a brewer. Okay. Uh, in the month or uh, first month, General Journal 23. Uh, credit for 9620, which brings our current running balance to 9620. Next, uh, after this, our grinder. First month, General Journal 23, credit for 69.09, which brings us to 69.90. Sixty-nine oh nine. 69 09. No, I'm just trying to make sure someone's paying attention. <laughs> yeah, 69 09. Paying attention, trying to keep up. Oh, I'm sorry. If you need me to slow down. No, you're good. I'm uh, learning. You guys do all this before class, so now I'm starting to use the recordings that she makes at night to keep up. Oh no, no, no. This is this is all new to me too. But but the journalizing now, I got the the journalizing to the ledger kind of down. Yeah. But the rest of what we're doing today, that's all like like yeah. fresh fish to me. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching more, and now I'm learning to just use the recordings at night to do it on my own. Oh. But you're good. I'm paying attention. Oh, okay. All right. Someone's got me. I'm just like, all right. Um, where did we finish off at? We just finished the coffee grinder. Account 11 o 11, I mean 13 o 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the month, so 6 30. Uh, first month, uh, General Journal 23. Uh, tables for uh, 78. And 63 cents. Credit brings our credit balance to 78.63. Now down to our counters. Again, 6.30. First month, General Journal 23. I'm not actually putting first month. I'm just putting first. Does that make a difference now? It doesn't matter. This is your book, so. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm trying to speed this. All right. It's like, uh, you don't, so if you really wanted to, you didn't even have to put a note at all. Oh, because we know what's happening. You know what's happening. 
But don't then you say if someone takes over our books and says we broke overnight, if someone want to look at our books, they would kind of understand or right. If I if I look at your books, it's gonna say first, 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 first. I'm like okay. <laughs> uh, no, it, it will, it will, it will. All right, so we're gonna credit this for fourteen twenty one. Fourteen twenty one. Again, this is for practice purposes only. Um, when we look into um, looking at um, the accounting software, such as QuickBooks, yes, it is very important that you do notes because every transaction that you do, right, you best be descriptive. Okay. And I'll show you, we'll show you, we'll talk about that when we get into QuickBooks in two weeks. Now we're going down the desk. Okay, just give one more second. Okay. okay. First month. General Journal 23. Let's see, Nico, is it done for a sip? So, Courtney, do you want to smoke that sip? What? Nicole? Your microphone is unmuted. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right, uh, so uh, the credit's going to be for $7.84. Again, brings a running total of credits to $7.40. 80 Okay. Three more accounts, guys. So if we have to go over time, we'll go over just about two minutes. So maybe a couple minutes. Okay. So that's the desk. So we move on to the shelves. The shelves. Uh, for six dollars and eighty three cents. I mean, six dollars and eighty-seven cents for credit. <clears throat> that credit's going to be six dollars and eighty-seven cents total. Twenty-three. Yeah. Six eighty-seven. You said. Yes. Six eighty-seven for a total credit of six eighty-seven. Good. And now we scroll all the way down to our truck. Oops, I think I went a little too far. So here is vehicles, truck, accumulated depreciation, truck. And this one, I'm actually going to put another note that we used the truck and we put uh, 1,200 miles on it. Okay. Uh, our first miles, uh, uh, 1,200 miles. Journal 23, and I just lost my paper. So, um, and it's going to be for 2 57 and 67 cents, which brings our running credit to 2 57 and 67 cents. Okay. All right. Last but not least. Amortization, which is located in operating expense. We already did that. Oh, no. Um, yes, we did at the same time. We did depreciation expense. It's at the bottom of this page. Oh. So, yeah. So in this case, oh. we're going to do the goodwill amortization. Again, uh, 631st General Journal 23. Uh, and this time it's going to be a amortization. 
So it's going to be a credit again for 1167. Yes. 1167. Okay. Good job, everybody. Thanks for pushing through. All right. Uh, we'll continue on the rest of the adjustments, right? We only have a few more things, and then we can get started with computing our adjusted trial balance, okay? So...